the story of the Pastoral Sonata, Opus 28, is very special. Beethoven was young at the time. He had come to Vienna. He had succeeded in introducing himself as a musical personality. First, by writing what became a popular song. It was a serving girl in his boarding house called Elisa, and he wrote for Elisa this beautiful song that is still popular today. And Beethoven was not altogether happy about that because he did not want to become known as a writer of popular songs. He had already written a symphony. He had already written several works for piano. He had written several other songs. But this song, 250 years later, is still popular is still being taught worldwide to young pianists and is still even heard coming from a garbage truck when I was in Korea. So a good song is alive always and Beethoven was just beginning to emerge from a composer of short pieces for piano and short quartets to the point where Prince Lishnovsky befriended him. Now Beethoven was a great musician. He had a thousand ideas that were musical, that were wonderful but no idea at all about money or about social activity. He was delighted that the prince enrolled him into a club. And in this club, there was a gentleman named Joseph von Sonnenfels. Now, this very highly educated gentleman was a professor of political science. And the moment I read that, I had to learn this sonata because my husband was a professor of political science. And this gentleman became friendly with Beethoven and he had some research that he wanted to do in England and he invited Beethoven, of all people, to come with him to England. Beethoven turned down this invitation. He said, my goodness, the English Channel is so dangerous. There are boats that sink every day in the English Channel. I don't want to take a chance on that. I'm happy in Vienna. You go and tell me all about it, he said. So, Josephine. Sonnenfels went to England and he did his research and then he decided to go north to the country called Scotland. And while he was in Scotland, he heard a new musical instrument, one that he had never before heard, never seen. It was made from sheepskin and you had to squeeze it to play it and it had a very different sound to it. And everybody in Scotland seemed to enjoy this instrument. It was played at weddings and at all sorts of celebrations. And everyone in Scotland seemed to enjoy this instrument. And Mr. Van Sonnenfels decided to buy one to give to Beethoven when he went home. Beethoven saw this instrument, had no idea how to play it, and he took it home with him and 
figured out a way to bring sounds from it. Then he hung it on the wall as a kind of reminder to write something to dedicate to Joseph von Sonnenfels. And eventually, it took three years for him to write the sonata. And you understand, most composers, when they decide to write something, they start writing it and they continue and add to it and add to it until it is finished. But Beethoven didn't write that way. He had notebooks and he wrote a few bars every day, but not on the same composition. He'd write a few bars that would later become a song. Then he'd write a few bars of something that would become a piano sonata. Then he would write a few bars of something else that would become perhaps a string quartet. Then he'd write a few bars, something that became a symphony. Always a few bars, but many, many different pieces at the same time. And lo and behold, at the end of three years, he'd have all these works finished, and he'd have something to show to a publisher. Publisher usually took everything that Beethoven wrote because by the time he wrote this sonata, he was already very well known for his earlier sonatas. Now, this sonata, for the first three movements, gives you no inkling that there is a bagpipe to be heard. But in the last movement, in the fourth movement, you will hear in the bass. Something that you will recognize as the sound of the bagpipe. Now, in this sonata also, Beethoven does something very, very interesting that uh, is unique to his work. He thought in terms of stories, in terms of characters. I already told you about the song he wrote for the serving girl in the boarding house for Elisa. Well, in the second movement of this sonata, you will hear a description of a young lady that is absolutely adorable. You can just see her in her ribbon cap, in her sweetness, in her lovely character, in her charming manners. And he goes on and on about this young lady. But it is a sad story. I make up my own stories when I play, and I hope that you will recognize the young lady in the second movement and make up your story to please yourself. It is a sad story, however. The first movement of the sonata, I think, has the sound of a boat on a ch the English Channel with all the rough seafaring going on. You hear up and down and uh, a lot of sea traffic. And the third movement is kind of an entr'acte. When you have a long theater piece, then usually you will have a, a, a short period when a group of dancers take over or a group of acrobats. And that's what happens in the short, brief third movement of this piece. And in the fourth, you will recognize the bagpipes because they get louder and faster and faster as the piece pro progresses. I think of this sonata as the bagpipe sonata. Beethoven never called it the pastoral. And I don't hear anything in the music that reminds me of uh, the name pastoral either. But if you want to call it the pastoral, it's all yours. <laughs>